Well, it's a Figaro. That's exactly what we were talking about. It is. It is very much not effective. Um, it 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 can be effective depending on how you. If you have some kind of food heavy character like a spell cast, mostly it's from using spells. It's it's actually really difficult these days to make a character that doesn't use much spells that runs into food issues. It you know something like a Zen worshipper, but we're mostly talking about spell users. But outside of that, it's it's a total non-concern, and it it does prevent some like ridiculous amounts of resting. But for a melee character, you can actually rest very extensively. Um, and uh, oh, okay, Caustic Strike Skeleton. Wow. It's a vicious skeleton. Getting some of those rations. Uh, one of the... Uh, there's a proposal in the 021 plan on the wiki um, based on an idea that Elliptic uh, kind of communicated to me, which is basically XP decay. And it would be a way to do forward progress in like the least invasive way possible. And it's similarly modeled to how piety decay works. And the idea is basically that as you spend time continuously, you lose, um, uh, you lose experience in the sense that you get XP debt and then incoming XP has to go into that to restore that debt. And over the course, the idea is that over the course of normal play, you wouldn't notice this in any profound way. But if you spend a lot of turns, you would increase increasing amounts of XP debt. And um, the also in addition to this, the idea is that if you accrued enough debt to lose equivalent to an experience level, you would actually lose that experience level. So the idea being that the longer you just waste resting, the more debt you incur until eventually you could you could actually potentially die from running out of XL, but that would be the really degenerate sort of case. If you were just spending lots of time, you would just suffer because you would have this this debt accrued. It's similar to how uh, piety decay works, where you just like lose piety over time, and you see that if you rest a bunch, you can lose a star. And um, people are generally okay with piety decay for the most part, although some people do complain about it. Uh, it does get it does sort of penalize use of auto explore since auto explore is not 100% efficient at visiting every square or even the fact that you don't actually have to visit every square to know whether or not you need to visit a square on the map some squares you can tell can't contain any useful stuff so both piety decay and this xp decay system would slightly you know somewhat to some unavoidable degree penalize that um, and it was a system I was kind of excited about. There's a little bit of pushback from at least one other dev that maybe it would be actually difficult to balance this system, so that during the, so that through normal play you didn't really notice it, and that maybe it's not good to add another thing that penalizes auto explore. Like right now we just have piety decay, which does it. If we had this system, we would have another. But it would be a very UI sort of free way to do it and a pretty elegant little implementation of it. Um, but we didn't really go forward with that. We went with Neil's food simplification instead. The reason to spend uh, penalize excess time, so imagine I go downstairs and um, I wanna be as safe as possible. So I say there's some monsters when I go downstairs like now, like you see me on this level, say there isn't. Either way, it doesn't matter. I kill these monsters. The LOS from the stairs is free. Now I just rest on the stairs infinitely long until any of the woken up monsters that are generated on the level come wander into Los because they're guaranteed to do this over time. If I just sit here after killing these guys, if I just rest here, eventually monsters are gonna slowly wander into Los and it's usually gonna be just one at a time. So I can very safely kill them. And then once I've killed those monsters, I can start moving around, waking up monsters and go back to the stairs, lure them back. And you can do this very safely over really long periods of time. 
clearing the, in, the entire floor this way. So tactics like that, which are very safe and very easy ways to clear the level, but relatively tedious, that's the kind of stuff that we don't want to encourage or allow. Because uh, people, everyone's like, oh, I won't, I won't do this. It's too boring. But people actually will do it on some levels. And some players will do it on every level, and they will rightly complain about it. But it's just sort of a philosophy that we have with this game is that we don't want the best strategies to be really tedious and boring ones. And that's the basic idea of doing it. Yeah, what Arthur said, it turtling, that's, that's a good term. And yeah, I mean, that was just, Elliptic's idea I thought was a, a really nice proposal at a basic level, but it might, might not actually be the best way to go. It was just him sort of thinking of a nice idea that could work. Um, I'm actually going to firestorm this stuff. Oh, why not? Nice. Good miscast. Um. Well, Muffin Drake, if you actually believe that, you, you must also believe that Pi DDK similarly wouldn't would work would not work right but that is in the game right now and it works just fine i mean this is it the xp decay is basically exactly the way pi d decay would work and you the idea is you would balance it so that in the same way that the way pi d decay works successfully right now if you're playing over a reasonable amount of time you're not generally going to feel the effect of it oh we've got a curse toe we no longer have a curse toe. Firestorm OP. So an, an alternate uh, proposal that uh, Lasty Yep, that is what food is supposed to be for, Twitch Bucks, but it doesn't actually, it's not a very effective, uh, it's not very effective at doing this. And part of the reason that is the case is because food is used as a additional penalty for spell casting, and basically food drops are more or less balanced around that, because if it isn't, then spell casting will be severely penalized. If we balanced it so that, say, for normal play for a fighter, a melee character, had fairly significant food penalties if they were spending a lot of time, spellcasters would be super screwed because they have really high spellcasting costs. So we could remove the, the food penalty from spellcasting and that could help balance food. And that would be a kind of an acceptable forward clock system potentially. We don't want it to be so severe that the game feels like it's really a struggle or too much of a forward push, but it's really impossible to balance as long as spell hunger is in the game. So that's probably the biggest thing that we would target next without doing some completely new kind of system like I described, like Pi D Decay. But if we wanted to keep the current system, probably just axing spell hunger and possibly making some other uh, other adjustments to spells for you know for balance if we feel that outright removal is too much, that's the most likely way we'd go about it. Uh, che has a special adjustment. Uh, Arthur to prevent him from having as much Pi DD case exactly for that reason. And yeah, like um, you know, Iggy mentioned he has a problem with Pi DDK. He's not the only one. The issue that I meant about I, I said about Pi D or about auto explore is one issue. So it's not you know it's not a perfect system, but it definitely could work. And to give you an idea of what other kind of forward progress system, if you wanted to be a little bit more creative, uh, Lasty, one of our other devs propose basically removing uh, this is another issue with random trap trap generation he proposed removing random traps from generation whether or not you still have fixed traps that's totally separate and they could still exist for purposes of vaults and stuff like that but removing random trap generation and have trap effects that happen as you spend more time basically 
so that the more time you spent, the more traps uh, that you would you would get progressive trap effects, etc. Nailing that down, that idea down precisely would take some work, but that's the gist of it. Instead of something like XP decay, you would, as you spent larger amount of times, you would get these, you know, think of like Zot trap level effects that could be quite severe. Those are sort of more fun and exciting from a player perspective, so they might actually be seem more interesting to players. Um, but it's not clear that that system would work either, and it needs, I mean, it needs, before it, before you would know either way, it really needs some specifics. We got a bone dragon up in this. I've reached level 27, the final one. You know what, I think I will take a point of strength because that will improve my spell casting from the uh, armor. And uh, I don't care what people say about elves. My elf is a strong elf who likes to lift weights. And he doesn't appreciate you making fun of like his biceps and stuff. Or saying that, huh, you're an elf, you can't. You can't lift weights, you're not strong, you're an elf. Well, he doesn't, he doesn't really stand for that kind of crap. And if my elf sees you saying that kind of stuff to his face, well, he might just beat the crap out of you. Um, XP Iggy is super, like, the numbers involved are really large. Like, um, only on floor one, here's, here's an idea of what it, I, I'm so used to Discord, which has that as an alternate lookup. That's a bat, this is the lowest XP enemy, and so you can run into, I mean, it's, I don't even know why flooring would actually matter. XP decay is, like, gonna decay integer values of XP. It would never... We have something called random rounding that we do. It's a function called random div round, which essentially you give a... It takes two integer arguments, a numerator and a denominator. It performs... It's equivalent to performing that division, and if the result has a fractional component it of, like, say, 0.3, 30% of the time it will take the floor, and then 70... Or 30% of the time it'll take the ceiling, and then... 70% of the time that will take the floor. But even then, I don't know why integer arithmetic is going to be actually relevant to, to piety decay. Everything is really based on integers in the first place, including aught and the XP values themselves. We don't, we basically don't use floating point much at all. We don't use floating point much at all uh, in, this, in this game. And yeah, there is some integer arithmetic that results in flooring, but I don't see why uh, Pi DDK would really interact with that in any particular, particularly strong way. I mean, it's just the idea is that you would have some points, some integer values of XP debt, and you pay that off. There, I don't think there would be any need for anything like fractional. Uh, the things that don't use it are the things where it doesn't matter, more or less. If it feels like fractional values are somehow important, um, sometimes we, we do essentially what's uh, we do uh, something equivalent to fixed point arithmetic by just making the scaling factors large enough. Uh, Advil wants to actually make a little fixed point library since apparently there's one in the standard library, but it's or there's one that somebody wrote. That's, that's pretty general that we could use, but it's, it's somehow not very good. But we basically either do random rounding or we do fixed point in the sense that we pick scaling factors that are big enough so that it wouldn't, it wouldn't cause a problem. Yes, I mean, skills, it's all based on the XP earned, and then there's a, there's a translation between that and the the actual skill levels but I don't think there's really any technical issues about it but you know yeah obviously somebody needs to write the final patch oh man 
this guy's. Do I do I dare melee? Oh, oh. Well, guess the answer is yes, I do. So I don't know what this vault is. Oh wow, the flavor sword. Blade imbued with the essence of a legendary necromancer. Those slain in its presence are reanimated by its power and forced to fight on. Yeah, that's a fun sword. If you find it, or it's not great long term, but if you find it, it's a it's based on a double sword. Oh, this one. And we're not gonna this one is not that much loot. We're not gonna get um Uh, my last one was a Fifi for one and one. I only have uh, I only have one Felid one and one, and I have uh, Amulet of the Acrobat. Um, yeah, that Feck was actually the Feck high score for like a year or so because nobody played Feck. It was only like uh, oh, I guess it was a fifteen rune. Yeah, and um, this was this was actually very early on. This was back in 2013. I was still I didn't have nearly so many wins, so it took me like uh, 90 attempts or so to win this. It would probably take. I mean, I could probably win it in one attempt now, but back then it was. Well, we didn't uh, we didn't go through crazy amounts of food. That's good. I think that one has a bunch of um, there's tomb. Yeah, Fiend Fien is pretty good. Uh, the only issue, though, see the Felid. The problem with Felid, as a streak species, they are problematic because they have an awful early, few levels depending on your start. If, you, if you're if you a mage, you've, you've got it made more or less. It's still scary because you can, you can die with the right circumstances, but for the warrior mages and for things that aren't uh, berserker, it's, it's scary. And um, enchanters are one of the weaker D1 classes because their starting spell is very weak and they have to get to XL2 before they get, start getting the overpowered you know, hex spells. And so they have a very scary D1 and feel it is a scary D1 species. So it's, it's, it's a, yeah. I mean, anything like that is definitely going to be scary. Riding on hexes to save you because centaurs can outrun you. And obviously they can shoot you for like, you know, potentially two thirds of your HP and stuff like that. I actually started a fiend and I died. That was my one and one. And I had a real, I had a truly awful D1 entrance vault, um, but I, I definitely made a mistake or two. It was rough though. I, uh, I almost successfully lured that jackal back in and got out of the situation, but I just made like the, you know, a kind of a subtle error, a couple of them in the way that I staged that fight. So I lost, I was like, oh, that really sucks. I mean, I probably could have saved that one. And then I immediately accidentally miskeyed and started up another one, which was useless because I couldn't use it for one and one. And I also didn't want to park it because I was using that server. So I had to quit and that, that lowered my win rate for the current version quite a bit because I had one actual death and then just one zero turn quit. So it was really annoying. But yeah, any of the Felid book starts are like basically the way to go, or Phoebe is, is very, very good. My life store, life force is restored. I've never felt so restored in my life. Maybe we should, uh, Protection. It's like that guy had. Oh, here's a link scroll. Wow, another one. I don't think I really ever want to 
Oh, I don't want to wear that one, that's for sure. Actual Iron Troll, interesting. Specters like that actually generate normally? I feel like they don't. I already have Flight. Do I have Potions of Flight? Yeah, uh, Dart Slugs are scary on a Fuelid. They can hit you for your max HP. But yeah, after that, I had a more interesting Feel It experiences. I had a, a Feel It Ice Elementalist of Sif. It went very, very smoothly and well um, until I decided I was going to go for Glaciate because I wanted a way to go through the end, you know, the end levels. And so I sat there sinking tons of XP into that, which kind of sucked because I couldn't raise fighting and other skills that might be helpful. And then Glaciate is a pretty awful level 9 spell. And probably the safest way for something like a Felid to use it, since they they generally can't stand next to monsters for any length of time, since they only have EV, unless you want to use maybe statue form, which I didn't. Um, oh, I didn't see where you went, my friend. So it sort of took me a while to realize that, yeah, but if you kill hole with Glaciate, it actually works reasonably well. And um, I kind of realized that by late depths, but then I went into Zot and sort of wasn't thinking about this and ran into all sorts of trouble in Zot, trying to just kill things coming from all directions and burn through my lives. And then by the end, though, I finally realized, oh, right, I need to kill whole stuff here. What am I thinking? And then the rest of Zot was fine, but I had already lost all my lives. And I got um, encircled by Tiamat from a Draconian shifter. I probably could have handled that situation slightly differently, but I was like, you know what, I kind of screwed this character up a little bit. Let's just redo it as a, as a Firestormer. So I quit that one and, um, and redid it as a, as a Fire Elementalist, and it went very well. I just, I got Firestorm, and it was, it was very easy. Also, like the Ice Elementalist, it was easy throughout the main game, but the end game was a lot simpler to deal with because I had Fire, you know, I had an actually good level 9. Oh, my friends. Wait, I can Firestorm you, right? Yes, I can. I'm so sorry. Oh, I think I miscast. Uh, it depends on where, how you're building out those feelids. I would tend to think of them mostly as spellcasters, or you could go for... My pre preference would honestly be dragon form, but you could do statue form just fine. Um, one of those two ty types of quote-unquote builds. And um, you can be a little bit more of a melee cat using, you know, less... You know, you don't have to go for, like, an absolute level 9 spell, because Felids can do some melee. They do have outstanding EV, but they, they only have that one stat, and their HP is just abysmal. So I find it not... I just find it kind of painful. I would prefer to play them as a quote-unquote blaster caster, or as a form user. Yeah, having more experience is always the key. Like, Feck took me 90 attempts. And now, I mean, I could potentially win it in one attempt without too much trouble, just basically depending on whether or not Zom decided he was going to kill me. Um, so we got 14 of these. What did I want to train next? I wanted to get Fire and Conch going again. Let's say 22. Reason being, I would like to not have to... So this vault is incredibly easy with uh, Firestorm. Uh, you know what, I don't actually want to... Oh, we did uh, lose some rations, but... Oh man, there's a click, suddenly the gates are dropped, yep. That's true. So we got staves, we just didn't get any ones that we need. We just got some probably pointless, uh... Wow, contam and slow, huh? 
Fragile piece. Well, there's a... My other... Oh, I still have that on. Um, do I like this better than my other one? Well, uh, oh yeah, I do have a Ring of Flight. It's for our Poison and our N. Oh, it's also C and Viz. Yeah, so. Marginally useful, but actually not even useful. Oh, look at that. Gold Dragon Scales. As strong as my elf is, he's not quite that strong. Spectral, there must have been a vault that the, the Spectral Deep Trolls, or maybe it's uh, the end vault here that might be. I don't know why it's placing Spectral Trolls, but whatever. Not like those are meaningful in any way. Ah, now we found it. Now we found the flavor vault of the, of the century. It's got a ration in water and vaults. It's a water vault that places Spectral Trolls. I could see myself removing this vault in the future. Or just modifying it to have enemies that aren't pointless. Deep Troll Shaman, what the? Where did you come from? Oh, you're a shapeshifter? Oh, no, you were this. You were in this vault, too. That is interesting. He's supposed to buff the spectrals. He's a... He's like a deep troll necromancer, except he isn't at all like that. Well, that was a very, very easy crypt. Not a problem, but we really didn't get any closer to our uh, goal of... So one thing I can do is go into the depth sig and do a few levels and see if I can maybe luck out. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and just do Zod because we really don't have much else left. I mean, we can also go get the Abyssal Rune, but there just isn't, there just isn't too much. Um, just isn't too much. Uh, in Abyss to actually help us out. Okay, we are gonna put on the Staff of Wiz. Oh, Staff of Energy, hello. Okay, I picked this up in uh, Crypt, obviously. Level three of Crypt, all right. So that is a thing. Um, this isn't really exactly what we need. Um, we also really would like a crystal ball of energy, um, because I'd like a better source of channel for somebody with only 160 max HP. Oh, the other thing I wanted, um, which I don't, I didn't get, did I now? Oh, Dispel Undead. Absolutely, yes. Now, it's spell power is not... Well, it's going to have pretty good spell power. Oh, yeah. So, that's our that's our free, like, lich solution. It doesn't... It's not as safe as Firestorm, but it's, it's like 10... Well, maybe 15 MP as opposed to... As opposed to 18 or 27... Or, actually, yeah, 18 or 27 and a hell of a lot more noise... So it can be kind of convenient. And uh, we'll be looking out for maybe a cloak. A cloak of MR would be okay. I would also take a cloak of Invis. Let's see what happens on Zot 1. Nothing so far. I can live with that. So we're going to full clear this. Hello. Hello. All right, acquirement scroll. Yeah, so the loot in Zot is actually fairly good. The random 
the random drops have like the best depth in the in the connected dungeon basically so sometimes Zot can pay off with something big so the question is what do we acquire do we acquire book with the hope to get necromutation that would really help out making um, our trip to go into tomb next much e after Zot much easier or do we go for misc and hope to get for the crystal ball I actually think I might sit on this one because both of those are influenced by what you find so I actually want to see I want to basically maximize the chance that I get what I want 